Okay, so Brazil were playing South Korea in the second round of the World Cup. Um, that first 45 minutes was by Brazil was akin to the 1970 Brazil winning side. It was samba football. Uh, just ridiculous. Just It's 4-0 at half-time. It could have been 10. Um, it's the best way I can describe that. South Korea would like deer in headlights. They didn't know how to... They were, they were just completely shell-shocked by what they had to deal with. And I'm very surprised by the South Korea performance because South Korea generally um, set up in a very structured defensive counter-attack kind of manner. They were just like a sieve. And if it wasn't for their goalkeeper, it could have been 10 or 12 or however many you want to, to, to put a label on it. It, it. This could have been any score. This could have been a cricket score. But in the end, it was only 4-1 at the end of play. Uh, the Brazilian intensity dropped off in the second half. Uh, the match lost complete intensity in the second half. And I think that a lot of that had to do with the substitutions. And I'm not a fan of the five substitute rule that appears to be here to stay long term, which was a temporary measure due to the COVID pandemic. Um, it completely disrupts the flow of games. Uh, and it did disrupt the flow of this game. And, and yes, South Korea get their goal, which is a fantastic goal by uh, Senghu Pak um, on 76 minutes. That is a thundercracker of a, of a, of a shot from about 25, 30 yards out. Allison has no high hope of stopping that. And yeah, it did affect Brazil and, and South Korea to a certain extent. It doesn't matter what the scoreline is. That, that's a criticism I've, I've got of the five substitute rule. But let's break down the Brazil first half performance, which is utterly ridiculous. Vinicius Jr., his goal, how he not only beats the keeper, but about five defenders with the shot, which is a cheeky little chip lob, kind of not the most powerful shot, but it's it's just cheeky and it's accurate. Um, that was on seven minutes. And South Korea had little flashes in that, you know, up to that point, of also looking a bit threatening on the attack, but they were too open defensively, and Brazil have noticed this very early on. That was on seven minutes. The penalty, yes, Richardson, it is a penalty. Like, the defender's miscontrolled the ball and he's kicked his foot. Uh, Neymar, look, he's a guy everyone loves to hate, really. He, there's no doubt on his skill and his ability, but um, his cheeky run-up, it's a bit disrespectful, possibly, but it's a, it's a fantastic penalty. Uh, he really can bamboo. The goalkeeper and Neymar, uh, obviously, they've met before in an international. They're, they're obviously trying to... You know, psyche each other out. Neymar wins the the, the stare down contest, and and the antics before the penalty, and 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 passes it into the back of the net. That's on 13 minutes. The Richarlison goal is ridiculous, um, absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's possibly the goal of the tournament. Uh, the interplay between players is fantastic. Richarlison basically creates his, continues the move, and helps basically create his goal by keeping the ball alive. Richarlison's skill set is ridiculous. And then it's the pass and move, and then he gets into the box and finishes off a fantastic team move. That is just... That is Samba football. That is... That is Samba football. That is... Retro Samba football from the 70s. They've, they've channeled that in Pele and Jorginho and Tostal for that one. Ah, it's fantastic. So if you're a, a viewer of a certain age and you remember the 1970 World Cup, if you're one of the older generation or if you've got footage of it, if you've got videotapes or DVDs of it, I suggest if you haven't seen the 1970 World Cup, the Brazil side, just just watch the game against Uruguay, the semi-final or the final against Italy. And Uruguay and Italy were world-class sides then, you know, at that point in time. And they, you know, tear them to pieces. That is just how I would equate that goal. And that's from 29 minutes. So the, the, there's just a spell where Brazil are just ripping South Korea to pieces. And if it's not for the Korean goalkeeper, as I say, it could have been a cricket score. And then Lucas Paqueta's goal just before half-time and 37 minutes sums up a almost perfect first-half performance by Brazil. Uh, there was a few little flashes by South Korea. And of course, half time comes and you're thinking if Brazil continue on that form and, and don't ease up, you know, they, they could really lay down a statement of like we could score five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many you want. And this is where I think the substitutions are a negative with the amount of them. I know you get three opportunities to make your five subs, but I, it did ultimately disrupt the flow of the game. Uh, Brazil lost a bit of intensity. 
the South Koreans were allowed to stabilise the situation and, and perform their rearguard action. And yeah, Paik's goal, seng Hu Paik's goal is, is the second best goal on the night, in my opinion. That is an absolute cannon of a shot he's got. And it so helps, it does help when you spend seven years at Barcelona's academy. Uh, that will help you. And this isn't a bad Korean side. I mean, they've got goals in them, but they were very naive in their tactics, too open defensively and, and got their setup wrong. Um, there are ways to counteract this Brazil system. And the way the Koreans were like, we'll, we'll play them at their own game is, is tactical suicide. There are ways to nullify threats like Neymar and Vinicius Jr. And, and Richarlson and, and, and Casemiro coming in from... There are ways to nullify it. Organisation, uh, structure and hit them on the counter-attack because when Vinicius Jr goes forward he did leave his flank dangerously exposed and that's where the South Koreans got a lot of their joy was, was down their right which is Brazil's left so there are ways to, to unpick Brazil and they will give you opportunities and they didn't and Alisson had a very very good game could he done a bit better on the goal? Is there a slight deflection? Up until that point, Alisson had pulled off a string of good saves, actually. South Korea were creating opportunities in both halves. So it wasn't all one-way traffic for Brazil, even though the scoreline suggests that. And Brazil will give you opportunities. Um, even though they haven't actually conceded that many goals at this World Cup, they will give you opportunities. Um, they can switch off defensively, and they switched off defensively in this game for periods in the second half. They lost that intensity. They lost that structure and rigidity defensively. And South Korea had their chances. And to South Korea's credit, they didn't give up. Just because the scoreline was against them didn't mean they stopped trying. They they ran themselves into the ground. And they deserved their goal. That was just through sheer energy and commitment to the cause, even though they were losing. Uh, Brazil, I think that first half is the most complete 45 minutes I've ever seen in, in my life watching football. Actually, in my lifetime. I do believe, obviously, that I think the 1970 Brazil side is possibly the best side ever to win the World Cup. They scored in every game. Um, the only game where they didn't concede, didn't concede was against England and apparently the goal, the game of the century. And again, I do suggest if you can get hold of a copy of that match, I do believe that full match is actually on the internet uh, in colour. Uh, the save by Gordon Banks off Pelé... Uh, Pele's pass for Jorginho's goal, where Gordon Banks is not, just can't do anything about it. But uh, Bobby Moore and his battle with, with, with Pele and Gerson in the midfield. Apparently that is the game of the century. Played at altitude and 40 plus degree hit Celsius. Fahrenheit, that's in the high 90s, low 100s Fahrenheit. That apparently is the game of the century. It's possibly the best game ever seen. And, and that is from so many people around the world who've, who've re-watched it. Watched it then, watch it back now. I mean, that takes some topping. I do believe uh, a full match rerun is available on YouTube. Uh, I believe on the FIFA World Cup channel as well. I think there is some archive footage. Uh, if if this Brazil side can channel some of that, they, they are going to score a hat full of goals. They're going to be outstanding. They've laid a marker. If they could turn that into a 90-minute performance, oh Christ. I'm not sold on England being at that level, but I think the Dutch and the French could give this French side a, a real good game. Spain, I'm not sold on yet. But apart from the Costa Rica game, that Germany game, they weren't overly convincing for me. Um, so I think this Brazil side, only a handful of other sides left in the tournament can challenge them. Uh, they, yeah, this, if they can put a 90-minute performance together, that is akin to the 1970 side, in my opinion. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below and I'll have some more contents for you very, very soon.